Triathlon swimming is just like swimming in a pool. No, no, it's really not. In triathlon, you might well have to experience chop and currents, other swimmers in close proximity, having to sight off buoy markers. Overall, the triathlon swimming experience is gonna be very different to what you experience day to day in here. So how is this actually going to affect your stroke? Is there an ideal stroke for the triathlon swim? Don't call us copperheads, but we are going to start this video with a slight caveat. Just like in every sport, there's no exact right or wrong way of doing something. However, if you watch the top pro triathlon swimmers, you will notice differences, yet there'll also be some significant similarities too, and that's where we're going to be focusing. But before we crack on with that, just a quick reminder, if you'd like to support the channel, then you can do that by liking this video and also subscribing. To do that, you just need to click on the globe. Right, let's crack on with this. One of the first things you might notice about a triathlete stroke is, well, it looks a little less aesthetically pleasing. Take Mark's swimming stroke, for example. He windmills his arms around at an incredible rate of knots. Compare that to a pool swimmer and the contrast is pretty incredible. But it doesn't mean that triathlon swimmers have bad strokes. It just means that they've been adapting their stroke to the triathlon environment. In a triathlon with a mass start, swimmers can basically be shoulder to shoulder or tucked in on hips. Having a beautiful stroke where the hand recovers just over the surface of the water just doesn't bode well in this close proximity or in choppy waters. And arms can clutter and tangle with adjacent swimmers or simply get caught in the water. This is why many triathletes have ended up with a straight arm recovery to try and avoid this. But still, this isn't something that we advise you go away and actually practice. You want to get the fundamentals, the basics nailed in first. So spend time in the pool, getting your technique right and actually focusing on a lower arm technique. And then once you've established a really strong stroke, you can maybe start to look at adapting it slightly to open water, or you might even find that this arm recovery begins to happen naturally. And this leads us into arm rate or stroke rate. If you have ever watched any live triathlon coverage of races, especially the World Triathlon Series or Super League, you will notice just how fast a stroke rate triathletes tend to have, even faster than professional open water swimmers who are covering the same distance. And this is in part due to the disturbance of the water and the fact that the swimmers are in such close proximity. And if you think about being in that close proximity, there'll be chances that you get knocked and your stroke gets disturbed. And as a result, one of your pulls or every other pull might not be as effective and if you think about it if your stroke rate is nice and high it doesn't matter so much because you know that the next stroke is going to be coming very quickly however if you've got a nice long smooth stroke and one of those gets knocked you're going to have to wait a much longer until you get another efficient stroke in there's also thought that with that high stroke rate you can help to keep yourself that bit higher in the water and it might even deter some of the other swimmers getting too close to you now I appreciate we are maybe not painting the best picture of a triathlon swim stroke with fast straight arm recovery, but you still need to focus on the fundamentals like we mentioned earlier. And that's the underwater phase needs to still be spot on. What it looks like over the top doesn't matter so much. And actually speeding up the stroke rate a little bit will prevent any dead spots in the stroke. Okay, now for the legs. You might well have observed that triathletes tend to have a slower or less strong kick, especially as the distance becomes longer. But this isn't actually something that's unique to triathlon, as long distance swimmers will do the same. If you've ever seen a sprinter, well, they're gonna have a six or even up to eight beat kick. So kicking really hard, whereas a long distance swimmer could have a kick as low as two beats. And the idea is it's preserving energy and making your stroke more efficient. And at this stage, as you get to the longer distances, the kick is more about balancing your stroke as opposed to propulsion. And in triathlon, you'll see between a two and a four beat kick for the majority of this for those reasons. Now the kick rate can change numerous times throughout a triathlon as it's much easier to change your pace by upping your kick quickly than it is upping your arms. And you might need to use this at maybe the start of a race when you want to get away quickly and get a good position, potentially position yourself around a boy or just generally if there are any surges throughout the race. But you do still want to bear in mind that you're obviously going to have to cycle and run after your triathlon swim.
Well, a fairly obvious and necessary change you will see in a triathlon swim stroke is sighting. Now, obviously, with no black line to follow, you're going to need to look up every now and then to see where you're going. So with the result of that, you'll just have to lift your head to sight off those buoy markers. But it also comes in handy for keeping an eye on the other swimmers around you. So whether someone's making a surge and you want to try and get on their feet, but also just being aware of your surroundings to make sure that you don't swim into other swimmers. Another area that is maybe less obvious is the breathing, but due to the nature of open water swimming and having that close proximity to other swimmers, it's really useful to be able to breathe on either side. And we typically call this bilateral breathing, but you'll actually notice in triathlon that swimmers might breathe just on one side for quite a few strokes when they've got another swimmer alongside them so they can keep an eye. And then later on in the race, they might be breathing to the other side when there's someone else on that side. And it's really useful to be able to chop and change. You might also want to change the side that you're breathing on if there's waves or chop coming from one direction or potentially to avoid the glare from the sun. Well, this leads us nicely on to the final point, drafting. And if you come from a swimming background where you've trained in the pool, it might seem alien to be in close proximity to other swimmers, but for example, in a triathlon mass start, you can't really avoid it. So you might as well benefit from it. And if you can get close enough to another athlete and be on their hips, you'll find that you can ride their wake. So there'll be a slightly uplift in the water if you're near their hips. Just be careful though that you're not clashing arms with them and disrupting their stroke, because otherwise they'll get annoyed pretty quickly. The other option is to swim on their feet. So basically slip streaming like you would on a bicycle, that same draft effect, but you're swimming as close to their toes as you can without annoying them. And you'll just get that natural benefit. And this gives you the option of swimming at the same pace for less effort or potentially getting onto the feet of a faster swimmer where you can then swim at a faster pace for the same effort you would usually be putting in. Well, who'd have thought there were quite so many differences between a classic pool stroke and a triathlon stroke? But as we've mentioned several times throughout this video, you really still want to concentrate ultimately on your technique and nailing perfection in the pool. And then as you do more triathlons and more open water swimming, you'll start to adapt naturally to some of the technique points that we've mentioned earlier. But wherever you are in your journey, it's the underwater part of the pool that is key. So keep your focus there. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. You found this quite useful. We'd love it if you gave us a like.